Hey family, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a video on how to effectively heal the sick in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be sharing with you five principles. Um, the first principle is um, we have to have the revelation that every believer is able to heal the sick. All right. The Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall cast out devils. They shall take up serpents, drink any deadly poison. It will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Okay. So these are the signs that will follow all who believe. Not all who are pastors, not all who are prophets, not all who are specially gifted, not all who are anointed, men, all who believe. All right. Jesus himself, anyone, Jesus said, if anyone b believes in me, he will do the same works that I did and even greater. Why? Because I go unto the father. Okay. So. If you are a believer of Jesus, you have the ability to heal the sick. You must have this revelation. It's very important because if you don't have this revelation, it'll be hard for you to have faith. Okay, you'll see, you'll, you'll think, oh, I don't have a gift. Oh, I'm not special. I'm not anointing. If you are born again, the spirit of God, the spirit of God lives in you and the spirit of God wants to live through you. Secondly, um, you have to have the revelation that you all you are commanded to heal the sick. It's actually not an option. Jesus said, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead. And then he says to his disciples, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Well, within the everything that I've commanded you is preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead. All right. So it's a commandment to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. It's not an option. OK, <laughs> you don't have a choice in this. Right. If you're an arm, a soldier in an army, uh, you have to obey your commander. You can't say, oh, commander, it's not my gift to go and do this. Um, therefore, I uh, going to stay at home and I'll do it. Nope. Jesus is our commander. And if Jesus said, if you, do, if you love me, you got to keep my commandments. Right. If you're a child of God, you're a disciple of Jesus. You must deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. You must lay hands on a sick and the sick shall recover. Um, it's a commandment, right? Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So if you were sick and there was a, a child of God who had the ability to set you free, would you want him to set you free? If your answer is yes, then you have no choice but to start laying hands on the sick to see them recover. All right. So you have the ability and you have the responsibility. All right. I once heard a man say your responsibility is simply your response to your ability. All right. So if you have the ability to heal the sick, what is your response to your ability? Are you going into the hospitals? Are you are you laying hands on people with on wheelchairs? Are you laying hands on people with crutches? You must respond to your ability. If you have the ability to do good, what is your response to that ability? As a child of God, you have the ability to heal the sick in the name of Jesus. Now you must respond to this ability. You must take responsibility. You must obey the commandment to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, to preach the gospel with signs and wonders, to heal the sick, um, to demonstrate the power of God, to lead people to salvation. Right. So it's a commandment, a commandment. <laughs> All right. Um, thirdly, you must understand that it is always the will of God to heal. All right. Um, uh, the Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So healing is actually in the atonement. Uh, Jesus paid the price. He shed his blood for sicknesses to be healed. Uh, Peter quoted Isaiah 53, but he changed it. He put it in the past. He said, by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. All right. So at the, when Peter wrote it, Jesus already went to the cross. He already shed his blood. So healing is already in the past. So God already established healing, right? So when you ask God, if it, is it your will? He could only respond by the stress of Jesus. You were healed. It's already done. I already established my will, right? I already paid the price for, for healings. Now you got to activate it by faith. So healing is always the will of God because healing is in the, in the atonement. It's already established. Jesus shed his blood for the healing of humanity, right? He bore our sicknesses. He bore our diseases. And by the stress of Jesus, we are healed. And it's not talking about a spiritual healing because Matthew 8, verse 17 quotes the same verse. And he says that Isaiah prophesied this um, and Jesus fulfilled it by healing the sick and casting out devils. Okay, so clearly it's talking about a physical healing, not a spiritual healing. A any Greek or Hebrew scholar uh, will agree that it's talking about a physical healing because even the word healed is only used for physical healing, never spiritual, never spiritual healing. It's always the will of God to heal. It's very important to understand this because if you don't understand this, you will not have faith to heal. You will always question, is it your will, God? Uh, are you teaching this person through the sickness? Uh, what did this person do to deserve this? Um, is there generational curses? You know, all these false teachings um, could come, pop up in our mind and then you will not be walking in faith. You'll be walking in doubt. Right. But if you know the will of God, it's very it's a lot easier for you to have faith. So as soon as you see some resistance, you're not going to give up and be like, oh, it must not be God's will. No, if you see some resistance, you're going to persevere until that sick is healed or that until that demon is cast out because you know the will of God, which is healing and deliverance. Jesus said, pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. OK, so if the, the will of God, the will of God is that it would be on earth as it is in heaven. Anything that is done on earth that is not in heaven is not the will of God. 
So is there sickness in heaven? Is there demons in heaven? Is there poverty? Is there curses in heaven? Then it must not be the will of God because it is not in heaven. And the will of God is that when it would be on earth as it is in heaven. And as children of God, we have the responsibility to, to establish the will of God on the earth, to advance God's kingdom, to preach the kingdom of God, which means the rule and reign of God on this earth. Jesus said, all authority on heaven and on earth has given, un given unto me. Now go with this, author this authority and preach the gospel to every creature. Make disciples of all nations. Heal the sick, raise the dead. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So you must understand that it is always always God's will to heal. It's very important for you to have faith. Okay. Set, uh, fourthly, there are no obstacles to healing. All right. Uh, there's a man of God named Curry Blake. He says, the only obstacle to healing is the fact that you believe that there are obstacles to healing. Okay. Um, because so many, it's, uh, so many, um, there are so many false teachings out there that says that God is teaching you through the sickness, that uh, the, the sick person has too much sin, or there are generational curses, or the sick person doesn't have enough faith. So we're going to go through these one by one. The first one, um, that God is teaching you through the sickness, all right? The Bible says that it is the Holy Spirit who teaches us all things, and the Holy Spirit is not a spirit of infirmity. The Bible says that it is the devil who comes to seal, kill, or destroy, and Jesus came to bring life and life abundantly. The Bible says that Jesus Christ of Nazareth went around doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus healed um, a lady who was bound by Satan for 18 years. So we know that S Satan is the author of sickness, not God. Okay, so God is not teaching you through the sickness, all right? God is, okay. Another one, uh, people will say God is allowing it like he did with Job, all right? So, so, so. Why do you want to identify yourself with Job? You're not Job, okay? You are a child of God. You are have a new covenant. Uh, scholars will tell you that Job is the oldest, if not one of the oldest books of the Old Testament. So he did not have a covenant with God. He did not have the covenant that that God was Jehovah Rapha, the God of heals. And he certainly did not have the covenant that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed, all right? You are a child of God um, and you are to identify yourself with Jesus, not with Job. Not with the sick people, not with the sinners. You identify yourself with Jesus. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. The Apostle Paul said, it is no longer I live because it is Christ who lives in me. He didn't say, it is Job who lives in me. Therefore, I identify with Job. Therefore, this must be God teaching me or God allowing it. God did not allow it. God established his rule. All authority on him and us have given unto him. And so now you go and establish the rule and reign of God on the earth. All right, and the rule and reign of God on the earth, the law of God is that it would be on earth as it is in heaven. So if the devil comes to bring something that is not allowed, we have the responsibility to bind and to loose. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whether you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. We have the responsibility to cast out devils, <laughs> heal the sick, right? Uh, put Satan in handcuffs, right? And say, you are not allowed to do this, right? You establish the rule and reign of God on the earth. So it is, so God is not teaching you through the sickness, all right? Um, God teaches you by the Holy Spirit. He doesn't teach you through sickness and disease or through demons, all right? Um, secondly, the we, people will often say that person has too much sin in their life. That's why they are not being healed, okay? Everyone that Jesus healed, they were all in sin. Right? They're all separated from God. They did not have a covenant with God. Um, and yet God healed them. Right, And Jesus said, Now that you are healed, go and sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. And that means that the paralytic person who he healed, he said, rise up and, and take him out and walk. That paralytic person was in sin. right? But Jesus still healed him. And it goes with every single sick person that Jesus healed. They were all in sin. Right, He did not lead them in a prayer of repentance before healing them. He healed them and then he um, gave them instructions after. Right, And so we do everything backwards today. Like we want to lead people to repentance first. You know, I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong, but it's just simply not biblical, right? You want to uh, counsel them, speak with them with hours. Where did this come from? Is it a generational curse? Is it uh, because of a sin? Uh, first, you must repent of the sin. First, you must break with generational curses. Okay, all of that stuff is not biblical. You don't see it anywhere in the Bible and especially in the New Testament. You don't see anything like that, all right? And so we are not called to be judges. We are called to be deliverers, all right? So we are called to heal the sick cast out devils we are not called to uh uh counsel people 
to, for them to be healed or for them to be delivered. We are called to set them free and then counsel them if you want and then disciple them, right? All right, so nothing will stop the power of God, right? If sin could stop the power of God, none of us would be born again because God came, up, came in us when we were in sin, all right? He gave us grace. He gave us mercy. Um, all right, um, we don't see anything about uh, generational curses in the New Testament, okay? Um, the only part where we, where we see anything close to that is when the disciple said, who sinned? This blind man or his parents that he would be born blind. What did Jesus say? Say neither him, neither his parents, but by the, by the glory of God will be manifest. So Jesus didn't say we have to now go and dig into his past and break generational curses. Jesus never said that. Okay. The only t other time in the New Testament where generational curses um, is is even um, remotely talked about is uh, when Paul said, "Stop talking about vain genealogies." <laughs> okay. So. So all of these are just doctrines that are just excuses, actually. Because as soon as we pray for people and we don't see results, we have to come up with excuses and be like, that person has too much sin, that person doesn't have enough faith, that person has generational curses, that person, uh, God is teaching them. See, all that stuff is, is not biblical, right? So there's no excuse and there's no obstacles to healing. The only obstacle to healing is the fact that you believe that there are obstacles to healing. So if you believe that you have to break generational curses in order to see healing, then that's how your faith will operate, right? So, so you will go through the generational curses thing, right? Break the generational curses, pray for them, they'll get healed. And then you think it's because of the generational curses, but no, it's because that your faith is in that doctrine of generational curses. And that's how your faith will operate. But if you have the revelation that all that stuff is not needed, then you could just lay hands on the sick and heal them by faith. Okay. Um, the final thing is that people will say that the sick person doesn't have enough faith to be healed. All right. Um, if the sick had to have faith to be healed, how did Lazarus get raised from the dead? It was not the faith of Lazarus. It was the faith of Jesus. Okay. Um, when the Roman centurion came to Jesus, he said, my servant at home is sick. Jesus said, I'll come heal him. The Roman centurion said, do not come to my place because I'm a man under authority. I tell my servants, go and they obey me. So, so Jesus, all you have to do is say the word, my servant at home will be healed. Jesus said, I've never seen such great faith in Israel. And then Jesus said, go, let it be done according to your faith. And the servant at home was healed that same hour. So, it, was it the faith of the servant that was he, that healed him, or or was it was it the faith of the Roman centurion? It was not the faith of the servant that was at home because he wasn't even there. It was the faith of the Roman centurion. Jesus said, "Because of your faith, let it be done so according to your faith." Right? The Roman centurion had faith for his servant. That shows us that we can have faith for others. If we couldn't have faith for others, then how would be we be able to heal non-believers or uh, Muslims or Buddhists or you know witches? We have to be able to demonstrate the power of God. Jesus said, um, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Um, Jesus, the Bible says to lay hands on the sick. He did not say lay hands on the Christians who have faith and ask them if they have faith or ask them if they've repented or ask them if they have generational curses. He said, lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Okay, it's very simple. We have to be able to demonstrate the power of God, not just in the house of God, but even out in the streets to a lost world. We need to demonstrate the power of God, right? The kingdom of God is not just a matter of talk, but of power. We do not come just with the persuasive words of man, but with, with the demonstration of the spirit and of power, right? And, and the power of God was used to bring many people to salvation. Okay? So we got to get rid of all these obstacles. Uh, there are no obstacles to healing. Okay, the only thing that could prevent a healing is a lack of faith from the person who prays. All right, so as believers, we have to take responsibility and we have to have faith for others. If we don't see the result, the only reason why you don't see the result is because you did not have faith. All right, many people will say, yes, but I had a lot of faith. I know I had faith. Now I have a decision. Well, if you say that, then I have to decide, do I, have to, do I believe you or do I believe the word of God? Okay, because if you don't see the result, that means that the, according to the word of God, you did not have faith. It doesn't matter how excited you were. It doesn't matter how sure you were. You might think that you had faith, but clearly, if you do not see the result, you do not have faith. All right, so we have to take responsibility as believers and we have to start stop blaming the sick person, stop blaming God, st stop blaming the parents or the generational curses. We have to take responsibility and say, you know what? I do not see result. I do not, uh, apparently, I do not have enough faith. And so I'm going to keep persevering. I'm going to keep laying hands on the sick until I see greater and greater results. And I'm going to grow my faith, right? We often say that faith is like a muscle. You know, like the more you practice it, the more you um, get results. Okay. Um, so 
yeah, some people will say, but Jesus couldn't do any miracles in his own hometown. The Bible says that Jesus couldn't do any miracles in, in his hometown except lay his hands on a few sick people and they were all healed. So even in the midst of a city of unbelief, he had 100% results. Every sick person that came to him were all healed. The reason why he couldn't do many, 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 many miracles is because the people did not have faith. So they did not, they did not come to Jesus. Right? If I organize a conference and only two people come, I could only heal the two people. I can't heal uh, all the people outside because they didn't come to the conference because they didn't have faith. Right? So if all the people that had all the people in Jesus' hometown, if many uh, all the sick people came, they would have all got healed. It's just that they didn't come to him, right? Because because of uh, they did not have faith, so they did not come to Jesus. That's why Jesus not Jesus could not do many many miracles. Okay. Um, Okay, so the final key principle is that we must heal the sick, right? Not pray for the sick. Jesus didn't say to pray for the sick. He said, stretch forth your hand. He said, take up your mat and walk. He said, come out of the tomb. Um, he never pray asked God for healing or asked God to heal someone. He always took authority over the sickness, right? And he told his disciples to heal the sick. He did not say, pray to the Father so that the sick could be healed. He said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. And then how did Peter and John heal the sick? He said to the paralytic person, he said, look on us, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Nazareth, rise up and walk. Right? They didn't beg God. They didn't say, if it's your will, Lord God, please heal this person. No. They knew who they were in Christ. They knew their authority. They knew that this must, this is not the will of God. And they declared healing in the name of Jesus Christ. They took authority. Right? So we have to take authority. We're not begging God for healing. We take authority. Right? Uh, we establish God's law on this earth. Right, so when you see a sick person, you say, "Be healed in the name of Jesus." Walk in the name of Jesus. Sickness, go in the name of Jesus. Right, we have to take authority. Okay, so to recap all the five principles, every believer has the ability to heal the sick. Secondly, every believer is commanded to heal the sick. Thirdly, it is always the will of God. Um, to, uh, healing is always the will of God. Fourthly, there are no obstacles to healing. And fifthly, you got to take authority over the over sickness. Right, heal the sick. Don't pray for the sick. All right, I hope this was helpful to you guys. God bless you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.